Hey everybody, welcome back to Video Game Esoteric and a continuing series, Sega Racing Renaissance, where I take a look at every single mainline arcade racing game Sega ever released in 3D. Today we have Sega Touring Car Championship. Now I will say right off the bat, there's something wrong with this game. It's actually quite fun in spots, but I would say it left me a little bit disappointed back in the day and I still feel the same way. Before we get too far involved though, do me a huge favor, go down below, hit like and subscribe, and that notification bell definitely helps us out. And if you feel so inclined and want to support the channel, we got a Patreon link down below as well. But if you give me the option to choose a Toyota Super, I am going to do it. Now, this game is fun. I am not here to tell you it's not a good game. This was made by Sega AM Annex, which was a hand-picked team of Sega developers, some of which that worked on Manex TT Superbike, and their task was to deliver a super realistic racing game. And in a lot of respects, they 100% succeeded at that task. The problem is this game is so precise in spots that it's almost impossible not to just drive the car right into the damn wall, ruining your entire race. This is an arcade game at arcade speeds that requires more like a simulation touch to it. I do like at the very beginning of a race though you get to qualify, you do that in a one hot lap and then from the rest of the game that is your starting position unless you advance. But you go right back into the same course in a rolling start a la Daytona USA and it is fun. The sense of speed this game delivers is amazing but right off the bat I threw the car right into the wall and some of the AI opponents are doing the exact same thing. Getting a perfect lap in Sega Touring Car Championship is next to impossible. It didn't matter how I calibrated my controls, how I calibrated the analogs for acceleration and brake, I just was never able to get a good lap in the game and that's what I remember from arcades back in the day. And that's what I remember when I played this on my Sega Saturn back in the day. And I am going to include some Saturn footage to talk about that port because, wow, it is really not a great time. But that's the thing about Sega Touring Car Championship. It is a fun game. It is just a frustrating game. It fights you at basically every opportunity you have. It just gives you hell time and time again. You'll see here that tail going out. That's totally fine for a drift. But controlling it the entire way around, you need to scrub so much speed to not crash that it becomes very difficult to actually get into a better position. So we started at 8th and we finished 8th. But moving on to the second course, I will say the game is very pretty in motion to look at. Sega Model 2 was a spectacular arcade board when it was in arcades, and I still think these graphics hold up incredibly well. This game just screams as far as the sense of speed is concerned. Throwing it into the corners, watching everything whip around, it is just so much fun in motion. It's just unfortunate that they went so hard in making something that felt realistic to real life that they made it hard for the player to enjoy because they even went so far as to take hot laps in touring cars with drivers to get a sense of how they operated. But I know I mentioned earlier the Sega Saturn version. Let's take a look at that because I remember this was an exciting game that I absolutely wanted. And I will say as far as ports are concerned, compared to something like Sega Rally, this is just not good. The staccato motion and the janky frame rate, the warping of the road at the bottom of the screen almost looks like it's in a fisheye lens. It is a bad version of a relatively decent Model 2 arcade game. This got ravaged in reviews when it came home back in the day, rightfully so. It is just a poor port and we will talk about it a little bit more later, but getting back to the Model 2 footage, it is completely night and day. It's a pretty game, it's just a frustrating game, but even the engine noises were recorded from real vehicles, period accurate. They did strive to make this a super realistic, super well-made racing game. The problem with that though is sometimes you need to dial it back to a little bit to make sure that realism isn't fighting fun. Sega is known for making fun arcade racing games and this is fun in spots, but it's also so realistic that you just get frustrated and you realize that maybe you don't want to spend all that time practicing to get better. But the soundtrack's relatively good, the engine noises are slightly too loud, but go ahead and listen for like 45 seconds and I'll be right back. Nope, just fooled you because you don't get to listen to anything. The soundtrack, even with engine noises on top of it, threw up a copyright strike, which is just one more reason that Sega Touring Car Championship absolutely frustrates me. 
99 out of 100 times a Sega racing game or a Sega arcade game in general will not do that. But after I criticized this game in the voiceover, apparently Karma decided to bite me in the ass because now I have to talk more about it. And that's just what happens sometimes in these videos. I love giving you a chance to listen to the soundtrack. So after this is over, go ahead and just look up Sega Touring Card Championship soundtrack. Listen to a track or two because I assure you it is quite good. The soundtrack is definitely better than the racing. But now that I've filled this little gap, we'll get right back into the normal video right about now. I just did you the favor and took out the engine noises. I'm not sure if it's down to Model 2 emulation. They are just too loud and they annoyed me when I listened to this in review, so I decided you could just hear the soundtrack because that really is the great part. And I will say the soundtrack of this game is absolutely spectacular. 10 out of 10, classic Sega. We are going to now almost run out of time there. We squeezed by in first place, but it is a sum of the entire parts, and you get seventh place in the end. But let's put these things side by side and talk about that Saturn port, because I remember magazines were hyping this up back in the day, and you can tell when you put these two games side by side just how inferior of a port the Saturn version is. Now, the Sega Saturn was not the biggest 3D powerhouse in the world, but it could have good racing games. Sega Rally is an excellent game on the Sega Saturn. I don't know if this was rushed. I don't know if it was given to somebody who was not familiar with the Saturn architecture, but you can see night and day just how different these two versions are. If your only experience with Sega Touring Car Championship is the Sega Saturn version, I could understand why you would say it's a bad game. Because if you read reviews of this game, online if they reference the Saturn version whatsoever they're gonna tell you it's not worth your time you should just avoid it and I would say if the only version you can play would be the Sega Saturn version I would agree with that statement but we can emulate the Model 2 and honestly buying a Model 2 board for this game isn't that expensive so if you wanted to have this in your home on original hardware you're looking at like three four hundred bucks which I understand is not cheap but is not terrible but definitely you can just tell if you're experienced with the Saturn version you're just not gonna have a good time and it even seems to run ever so slightly slower but moving over to another course entirely it doesn't improve much whatsoever it is impressive how they got the entire environment over to the Sega Saturn version all the buildings are there all the environments are there it's the same game one-to-one -one as far as what they've put into it is concerned unfortunately it is not a one-to-one -one experience to the model 2 version which obviously the Sega Saturn would never be capable of but this is not up to par for what the Sega Saturn could handle and that's why it's so unfortunate this is probably the first game in the entire retrospective where I say the console version is basically unplayable and I would avoid it completely when we talked about stuff like Sega Rally I said it was an inferior version but still an excellent version of that game and it's just kind of a bummer the Sega was better than this and honestly that's kind of what I feel about Sega Touring Car Championship in general Sega was just capable of more than what we got here and that's not a knock at the developers they had a goal in mind make a super realistic racing game and they succeeded maybe too much so but you can change the game mode you'll see normal short long and grand prix so if you're tired of just kind of playing the touring car championship you can go over to grand prix select whatever vehicle you want again if there's a super i'm always going to choose it because why not i'd love to own one of those cars in real life with that kind of skin on it i'm sure somebody out there does but now you'll see that we're able to enter our name and play the Grand Prix version. So the arcade version does give you slightly more options than a standard arcade board would. And now you'll see we're starting in position 5 of 8. And we actually have 5 laps to go around the track. Unfortunately, there is no way to remedy how easy it is to get your car out of its line and into the wall in this game. Maybe if you played this for 15, 20, 30 hours, you would finally understand how not to do it. Because in some turns... It seems quite easy in other turns, even slowing down, it just wants to fishtail out. The steering is just a little bit weird. But that is Sega Touring Car Championship. I would say of all the games in this series, it's my least favorite, but it's still fun. See you guys next time. Bye-bye.